With Denzel, we'll let the uh, process play out. You know, he's appealing, so we'll see what happens there. If he has to miss time, we'll have our young guys step up and be ready to go. Part of the business. They hate to lose a, one of our starters, a good player, and Denzel. But uh, we'll see what, what happens throughout the process today. And we're excited about you know what our guys have done here to create the energy and the buzz around the city. I think our fans here in Houston deserve it. Uh, it's, and so our guys have done a good job. Our fans have done a great job of supporting us. We feel that support. We feel the energy when we're in our stadium. And we love our fans, love the support that they bring us. And you know we're just excited to continue to go out another week and just go play good football. right? And I think we continue to play good football. The city will continue to be excited. With the Cardinals, I think it starts with Kyler Murray. Uh, first and foremost, getting him back. You talk about an explosive, dynamic playmaker, the quarterback position, one of the premier athletes in the NFL right now. Uh, does a really good job passing the football, but as we all know, him with his scramble ability, that's what won them the game this past week. So it's going to take everybody right to – Get him down, right? We have to be tight in coverage, and we have to, as we say, we have to cover him twice. We got to rush twice. We have to stay after him, right? Because he's going to continue to keep plays alive. That's where he's thrived in the league of, you know, extending plays. He's done a really good job of that. So we have our hands full, and he's been a really good player. But it starts there with their offense. Also with Connor, a physical runner, right? We have. We have to step up. We have to tackle him. He's going to be a, a tough out, right? He's a physical runner. It's going to take more than one guy to get him down. But offensively, we have to, you know, get after those two guys on offense. And then with their defense, they do a really good job with their scheme, multiple scheme, many different looks. Right? Uh, Jonathan has done a really good job there with that defense. And they've they've been in a lot of games, kept them, kept them close. And uh, so it's – getting one of their best players back in Buda Baker since he's been back. I mean, he's been one of the best safeties in ball. Flies all over the field, sideline to sideline. Instinctive player, always making plays. Coach, is it is it more challenging prepping for a Cardinals team that's kind of had multiple quarterbacks in this season, doing different things offensively? Can you kind of take us through that, how you kind of dissect what you've seen on film from them? Yeah, for them, I, I go back to what Kyler does best. I think that's where – your play caller, everybody, you got to do what the quarterback does best. So you look back at past film of what Kyler has done, I think that's where they'll live. To that point about um, Kyler Murray, there's a lot of dual threat quarterbacks in the league. When you guys are running, I know you guys are great on, but when you guys are running, what makes him different as far as looseness versus maybe some other QBs with, you know, scrambling around? Yeah, the difference in Kyler is just the speed. He has to be the fastest quarterback in the NFL. The speed is real, and when he's healthy, it's a problem. Right? And he has the ability – uh, most guys say step up in the pocket, but he has that ability to retreat back in the pocket and still circle the defense. So you talk about elusiveness, you talk about the speed, the just a dynamic, dynamic athlete. Yeah, but the, uh, what would be the most impressed about with, with CJ? Say it again. What would be the most impressed about with CJ? Uh, with CJ, I think the thing that impresses me the most is just how the guys in the locker room, how he's won the locker room and the guys play for him. Uh, Guys truly believe in CJ. He exudes the confidence, and our entire team is confident, I think, because of what CJ has done. After the uh, Panthers game, you said that you need to learn how to handle success better. The success you are having now has led to headlines and interviews and everything. So have you had another conversation, or what's that conversation like? The conversation that comes about success and how you handle it is don't get the big head. We stay humble and we stay hungry. That's what it's all about. You stay humble, and that's that's the only way I know how to approach it, right? Just as much as people talk great about you, 
if something goes wrong, they'll be talking bad about you the next day. So you can't ride that wave. And I teach our team, we don't ride the ups and downs of the season. We prepare the same way each and every week. And we go out and play our best football on Sunday. That's all that matters. We can't get caught up in the headlines because headlines don't win you games. You got to go execute. You got to go play good football to win games. And that's the only thing that matters to us. The suspension came out. It is what it is. Well, Denzel is appealing it. We'll see what happens and what's the outcome of the situation later today. You talked about the, the defensive line, the, the rush together. Can you expand just a little bit more? Uh, you guys have had a lot of success in those like, past couple of weeks, certainly Sheldon, last game. Can you expand on how, what exactly that means? Is it just you know, games the guys play or just knowing the assignment that the other guy has? And with our defensive line and how they rush, it all starts with our interior guys, right? We get pressure with our interior guys and our, our edges guys, our edges, they thrive, right? But if guys aren't on the same page when it comes to communication, whether it's a game, stunts, blitzes, we just want all of our guys to be exactly where they're supposed to be, operating with precision and their footwork, their eyes, everything. It's all about being coordinated as four guys rushing together. To prevent explosive plays, we just have to do our job. And it's, it's as simple as that. When we do our job and we play well, we were getting three and outs, getting off the field, right? When we had any <laughs> drop off and not doing and doing not doing our job, that's when the explosives happened. That's when guys got out and plays were being made. So we just have to reel it in and you have to be consistent. Right? You have to stay consistent. You have to play together. It's all 11 playing together. When that doesn't happen for us, when it didn't happen in that game, that's when you saw explosive plays. Along those same lines, Coach, how do you <clears throat> coach instinct and play call? Now, for me, you can't coach instincts. Guy either has instincts or he doesn't. Right? For the play call, we try to put our guys in the best position as possible. But everything that we do, it's all about the players and them being able to make plays. Us as coaches, we step out of the way. We try to put them in the best position possible, but it's all about the players. They're the ones who make any play call come to life by what they're able to do out on the field. How do you, How do you build on what you guys started, you guys kind of progressed the last few months of the run game? I know it starts up front, but how do you build on what's happening at the end? Well, you just continue to continue to run it as best you can. I think each week is different depending on the defensive structures and what – what your opponent presents to you and how well you run it. We were able to have some success last week. It just doesn't happen the next week. You got to go out and earn your earn it. Right? When it comes to the run game, you have to be physical up front, starting with the offensive line. You have to create displacement, and the backs have to be physical running the ball downhill. That's what Motor did last week. Our offensive line did a great job of creating space for him, and that's why we had success in the run game. It's been awesome having DeAndre. You talk about a veteran, true veteran who comes in. Guy's been consistent. Guy stepped right in. Very smart guy. Uh, did it. Does a great job of communicating, helping out. Right, Petrie and the other guys in the back end. He's just a really smart player. Plays with great effort. Practices the right way, and it showed up. Right, he had a great week of practice last week, and showed up in the game. He was able to intercept the ball for us, but no play bigger than you know DeAndre running making the run for, uh, I think that was Chase who caught the ball, but going and save us, right, not allow him to get in the end zone, which allowed us to hold him to a field goal. For me, that's the play of the game, and it just shows the type of mindset that DeAndre has. It's just effort. He's just gonna, he's always going to do his job, always in the right place, so happy to have him. Having Nico Collins back on the field today, does that give a boost to the offense? Yeah, we'll see where Nico uh, see where Nico is throughout the week and Noah as well.
and for me, with any evaluation of prospects, like the thing is, you don't look at one thing and make a decision based off of one thing. It's for me, you look at the tape and you you watch CJ's film. You talk about playing quarterback. He's one of the best quarterbacks coming out in this draft based on the decision making on film, right? Speaking with him in person, you know, getting to understand him, getting to know him better, the personality, seeing how he treats others, seeing how his teammates. Uh, love him, seeing the care they have for him, seeing how his coaches speak about him. Right, when you take all those things, right, you take all those things into consideration. That's what helped me to make the decision. Uh, Mika, you've lost multiple players at every level in your defense, but your run defense keeps getting better. I think you're eighth now. How are you able, considering all the injuries you've had, continue to get better? Now with our run defense, it's about all 11. It doesn't matter who's out there. It starts with our edge guys being a, doing a great job. Will, JG has done a great job of setting the edge, first and foremost, not allowing the ball to get outside. And whoever steps in, safeties, backers, nickels, we expect all of our guys to swarm to the ball and tackle. So we're not expecting one guy to make a play. So that's how you play great run defense. It's all 11 guys keeping the ball inside, all 11 guys swarming to the football. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.